get a little blue toward the end of summer. I know that I'm going to miss the sunshine, but mm -hmm. the other thing is my flowers. So today we called in an expert to help you preserve your summer garden and make it last all year long. Melinda Myers is a plant doctor. She's an expert gardener, TV and radio host, and author. You know her. We love her. She's going to tell us how to preserve that garden, right? You bet. I think we just feel like summer got started and Labor Day is happening, and here we are, the end of the season. So I brought along a few of the plants from my front porch so we could preserve, do a little preserving. First of all, these are begonias, and they take sun and shade, great in containers. And I preserved those in a little different way. I did some flower pounding. These are real, just as you're looking at them, because they, <laughs> they look, look like they're fake. silk flowers, and they're not... They're real. I actually had to touch it and pinch it to know for sure. Yeah. And so one <laughs> way you can do it is pound them. And so these would be great gifts, fun for kids. I'll tip it this way a little bit. There you go. Thank you. I'll hold it for you. And when you have a bad day, it's a great way to get rid of some frustration. <laughs> How did so, you do that? What kind of fabric is this? This is a denim, a cotton. And one of the things you want to do is try different fabrics because I did the same flowers on this linen. Okay. Now I'll hold that one for and you. And you can see it's okay. just a little different. Now typically you can pound it directly on the fabric or try Treat it like dyers do with like an alum mix or some kind of mordant, and that helps really preserve those flower colors better. But a fun thing for kids to do. So I, I brought a cutting board here okay. for our surface. We're going to put down some paper toweling. Okay. We're going to grab a blank piece of fabric. Okay. okay. And then just arrange some flowers the way you'd just like however them. However, we want them. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm glad. I get, do I get to do the pounding? I, I pound it out. You're closest to the hammer, so uh -huh. you win. I like that. There you go, <laughs> Tiff. <laughs> Pound it. All right. Okay. And then hang on. We're going to okay. cover it. Okay. And then just kind of evenly pound. You can see the fabric oh, starting to come. It's like bleeding dye. through. It is. And the goal is, so just kind of keep pounding. Okay. And what happens is it transfers the dye onto the fabric. Now, if you have a lot of moisture, like in the morning, um, if you do that. <gasps> that's gorgeous. In the morning. Oh, that's fun. You might want to let the flowers dry out. You can do leaves. Okay, you can do all kinds of things. And so it's a really fun way, and then you'll just dry it, and that'll help preserve it. But, oh, you, you know, so it's cool. a fun thing to do. You can do it on watercolor paper and do yeah. cards and photos. So not only can you preserve oh, your garden for, for you, but to also for the holidays. And quickly, how do you dry flowers? Because a lot of people want to yeah, save, like, a bouquet from a wedding or from a special event. This is a silica sand? This is sand? a silica sand, and I've had this for over 35 years oh. and I've reused it. I did my friend's uh, flower sh years ago and she had irises and they preserved nicely. Oh, look, at look at that. But anything that's delicate, like the iris held the color and came out. So you basically cover them for about a week and then put them in an airtight container. So I was able to preserve her her bouquet from her Where wedding. Where can you get this stuff? Like craft stores okay. on some floor. It's called silica sand. Silica sand. Okay. And then a press. There's old fashioned. You can buy them or make them. Oh yeah. You know, just what press. You did. Okay. So you can do like cardboard and then mm -hmm. some nice absorbing paper, a phone book, newspaper. Um, I have a couple of different flower presses I've made or purchased. Mm -hmm. So it's a fun thing and it's a great way to go around and collect. That is so That's cool. So fun for and kids make a too. great bookmark too yeah. if you could laminate it, yes. you know, or something like that. And fall leaves look beautiful. Just remember however you put it down on the paper and that's how it's going to stay. So yeah. you want to make sure it's arranged properly. What what Molly said, like you could make it into a, a bookmark. Could you just press it by laminating it on one of those like laminator you, things? You want to test it because of the heat. Sometimes okay. you'll melt some certain plants depending on the laminating so machine. Press it first. You, you might want to press it first or try it and we see to put how it, it works. In a book. And rem okay, uh -huh. and in the old days, wax yeah. paper. Yeah, <laughs> we had books. Right? <laughs> yeah. Can't put it in a Kindle. Kindle. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't work, work in a Kindle. Same. Exactly. How about herbs. How do you dry these and make sure that you're you're you know picking them at the right time of the season too? Well, and one of the things when you're drying herbs or flowers, you want to pick them when they're already starting to dry. Mm -hmm. So midday is a great time. This is stevia, and it's I don't use pesticides, you so you can this. you can take a taste. Oh, it's sweet, right? Because stevia very, is, an, is a natural twist? sweetener. It tastes just like sugar. I ate a few leaves on the way. Oh, it does. I mean, there's no a way. little grassy I've never flavor, actually, but it's grassy sugar. I've never actually had the leaves, though. I buy stevia either. in little packets. Right. So I like it, that. So what you can do is hang it and dry it. Okay. You can also dry it in the microwave or the oven. I like to take a rubber band. Mm. Um, hmm. Because as the stems shrink, so does the rubber band or the hair tie, whatever mm -hmm. you have handy. And then I oh, usually take a clothespin 
you know, spring-loaded clothespin, and mm -hmm. then I can hang this on a clothesline in a dark, dry location for it to dry. Some people will cover it with a bag to keep the, the dust off, then grind it up, and you can use it for seasoning food. All right? year long. All year long. Put so it's really a lot mojito. of fun. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's just more so oh, fresh in the fantastic. summer, and then you'll have a little dried garden flavor to use in the wow. winter. I okay. love that. And then also, you know, we heard about freezing herbs and ice, mm -hmm. but I recently heard someone say, you know, do olive oil because most oh. of your recipes come, call for olive oil. So I just did this last night, took about a tablespoon of oregano, fruit and olive oil because that's kind of the recipes I use. And that way I just take it out, throw it in. I've got the oil Easy. and the oregano. Is that your idea? Oh, I wish it was. No, I, okay. I like I all good ask. ideas. I get them from someone well, else. Is that an oil? Isn't it fun? This is vinegar. Oh. And so making herbal vinegars. This is um, huh. a basil, a purple basil. I just popped it in. It'll need two to four weeks to seep and then it'll turn a beautiful pink. And it's just white wine vinegar. Mm -hmm. You can use rice vinegar. And you just put it in there, allow it to steep for a couple of weeks. You might want to take that herb out, put fresh herbs in. And again, not only for you to enjoy, but to give as a gift. I what a that. nice way Beautiful. to share your garden with people. Does that go bad? Do you have to take this out or you leave it in? It just doesn't look as pretty, so you can leave it in. But as it turns brown, you might want to put a fresh take sprig in to make okay. it look a little better. Then dress it up with greens or ribbons. And pretty. it's a great way to share your garden. And come the holidays, we're all looking for some nice healthful things to cook with, but also gifts that maybe, you know, are more from the heart and something that we've a grown cute birthday and shared. Oh, yeah, super excellent. Cool. What, can you do the same thing with olive oil? Because I love basil olive oil. Yes, you could do the same thing, either freeze it or preserve it. You want to oh. make sure your container's airtight. The oil doesn't last quite as long. The vinegar will last um, probably about six months or so. Okay. And a final thought about the other beautiful, now these are herbs probably in this container exactly. because I know your new DVD, mm -hmm. which we're going to give one away, which is mm -hmm. exciting in just a bit. And here's the name of it. It's how to grow <laughs> anything. It's container gardening tips and techniques. But that's what you have all in that container, right? Exactly. I'm a huge container gardener because mm -hmm. I love to keep things right by my back door. If it's handy and convenient, I'll use it. Now, I was out of town, so it's best to harvest your herbs earlier before they go to bloom. You can still use them. The flavor's just more intense I right before flowering. One. What is this? This is purple, purple basil. basil. Okay. And I don't can know you if I've ever had oh. purple basil. Oh my gosh, smell this, Ted. It's, it's wonderful. I, was wow. gonna, I rubbed it. I was going to say smell yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I was like, that too. Maybe not. Maybe not. That smells good. <laughs> and then, and you can dry flowers exactly the same way. I've got some wonderful celosia, that red up there, reddish orange, mm. and you could hang those upside down to dry. And one of the nice things about that celosia is it holds its color, hmm. either in the silica sand or hanging it upside down or pressing it. Celosia. Yeah. Coxcomb, you may know it as. Okay. Oh. Oh, what about the oven or the microwave? You can do both. So basically, um, on a paper plate, and okay. put some paper towels, put some of your herbs, you know, you might want to pick the leaves off, okay. and put them on there, and then put it in the microwave, and start with about 30 seconds to a minute, and see. And when they're crunchy and rattly, that's when they're done. And the same with the oven, a very low heat on a cookie sheet, bake them, and then you just want them to be kind of rattling around when you shake okay. the plate, then you know they're done. Put them in an airtight container, a glass jar or Tupperware, and you can save them all winter long. That's that great. is awesome. Okay, so I want to get to some information because you have, um, you do your garden walks, right. which is super fun at Baterna Burner Botanical Gardens. There's a picture from one of them, beautiful, and what a great way to share the outdoors with people who can come and visit you. And you've actually got the final um, one coming up for adults, which is happening on October 5th, okay? The one for adults is happening at 10 a.m. That's the fall finale, the garden walk. Again, it's for adults. It's at 10 a.m. And then the fall finale family fun walk is at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. at Burner Botanical, right? Exactly. We've had a few young gardeners, 7, 8, and 10, join us on the adult walks, which has been fun. They take notes, and they are very wonderful young gardeners. I'm so excited. And all ages are welcome, but we focus on the plants like an adult gardener in the morning okay. in the afternoon. Uh, kids of all ages are welcome, but we're going to have some fun bark rubbing and do some little exploring and a treasure hunt, and That's it'll be a great. lot of fun. And the mm. gardens are looking beautiful. Great resource we have here in Milwaukee. We need to take advantage yeah. of it. I agree. Your it's website is melindamyers.com. And now for that DVD we're giving away. It's brand new. We're giving it away to call number 8, 414-799-4444. And again, it's the great, it's how to grow anything, container gardening tips and techniques. And you'll win that by being calling number eight. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Thank you. Always good to see Great you guys. Great stuff today. Fun I love ideas. it.